If you want to overcome lower back pain, there is generally one thing that I find is missing in most people. Now this isn't everyone, but most people I find are missing this one thing when it comes to overcoming lower back pain. Now you've heard me talk about the nuts and bolts, so the exercises, the stretches, the movements, the postures, the positions. That's what I would describe as like the physical nuts and bolts of a rehabilitation program. But what most people are missing are the, is the or is the mindset, let's say. So the, the, the ability to set goals and how big those goals are and what those goals are. And also the expectation of how quickly we can get uh, the result that they want. So what I'm going to do is, now that we kind of understand that it's the mindset, what I'm going to do is I'm going to overview the process of how I work with people in my coaching process uh, to help them overcome their lower back pain. Once I've done that, we're then going to go through a hypothetical uh, case study and put it all together with regards to, we're not really going to talk about the exercises and stretches that they do, but we're going to talk about the stages, the mindset and the milestones that we need to be thinking about when this person is overcoming lower back pain. So the general process is an initial questionnaire. So they'll, they come to my webpage, enter their details, and I send them a questionnaire. Um, they fill out the questionnaire. It's a basic, it gives me a basic understanding of their lower back pain and some history about their lower back pain and themselves in regard to their lower back pain, that is. And once, once this is done, we then book a consultation, which could be face-to-face -face or online. This then allows me to probe a little bit deeper find out a little bit more about the lower back pain, understand the lower back pain a little bit more. It then helps me start to understand what sort of strategy that we need to be using to be able to overcome the lower back pain and the goals that we need to be setting and the milestones that we need to be reaching along the way. What we then do is then do an assessment. Again, it can either be online or it can be face to face. Now what the assessment does is a physical assessment that uh, sort of confirms or denies what we've been talking about in the consultation and the initial questionnaire. So it, we, it will sort of back up what they've, they've told me essentially. So we try and uh, sort of provoke the postures, the positions, the movements, the lows that could trigger their pain and see if that matches with what they've been saying their pain is like. So it's a bit of, it, it, it can just make it a little bit more objective. So once we've got all that data, we can then start thinking about how we need to go about it. Now, what I try to do with my coaching sessions is every two weeks. So this, again, could be face-to-face -face or online. But then in between that is the what I would describe as like the support. So they feed back information to me, what's working, what's not working. And then I just sort of, uh, sort of in some respects, keep them on the wagon with some updates, some refinements of the, of the advice or the recommendations that have been given. And then when we come back into the second session, we review it we update it, we possibly give them some new strategies if we've had good success, um, or some new strategies if they haven't. So, and then we repeat that cycle every two weeks for as long as we need to, or as long as they want to. So that is the general process. So what we then need to think about is uh, the case study. So let's just throw out um, a random, um, lower back pain problem. So let's just say that their lower back pain gets worse um, during the day. So as the day goes on, so they wake up and generally they're fine. What then starts to happen is as the day goes on, it gets a little bit worse. So, and let's just say a significant time is 12 o'clock in the, in the afternoon, so midday. So they wake up at seven o'clock and then it sort of, it gradually gets a little bit worse through the day and um, hits 12 o'clock and it's sort of, let's just say it's significant. So what's happening in my head is, well, okay, what we can start to do is one of two things. We can either try and push that pain back by an hour or 30 minutes or whatever it is. We can either try and push it back or we can try and dull it or we could do both of them, but that is uh, a little bit harder to do and I would recommend that a bit further down the line. So let's just say that we try and push it back by an hour. So I will, you know, based on what they've told me in the initial questionnaire consultation assessment, I will then start to uh, think about, well, okay, let's see if we can push this pain back by an hour. 
So it's not it's not a huge goal. It might it might not feel to them like a significant step. But what you have to understand with lower back pain, if we've sort of, let's just say we've created a, a crack in the lower back pain armor, if we can keep finding the right information, that crack could turn into a valley very quickly. Or if we can just keep crack a little, uh, just crack it a little bit, but then a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, over a extended period of time, it then that one crack can turn into a valley. And that is the mindset that we need to start bringing to it. Now it can be the same for the um, for the dulling of the pain. So we could say, okay, well let's, let's just say it's eight out of 10 when it gets to 12 o'clock. Well, let's see if we can get that to six out of 10 at 12 o'clock. So again, it's it might only seem like a small thing, but what we have to do, if we can get that small thing, that small, success or that small milestone can turn into a very big milestone if we keep going with it. So what then happens if, um, or over a period of time, is let's say um, I set that up after the assessment, so we set that strategy in place. I will then contact them in three to, sort of, let's just say three, four days time. I will ask, how is it going? How is X strategy going? How is Y strategy going? Is it working? How is your body responding? What's not working? Again, that's a very important question. A lot of coaches and therapists are afraid to ask that question because they think that they've done something wrong. But it's very good feedback to be for that person to be able to know and for me to know as a coach because then I know where the boundaries are. I know the boundaries of what's working and I know the boundaries of what's, wor of what's not working. So I know what direction not to take it in and I know what direction to take it in. So it's very important information. So what happens is I ask for that feedback. They then sort of feed that information back to me. What I can then do in between the sessions is give them possibly more updates or it might just be, okay, well, we're, we're getting success. Just keep doing what you're doing and let me know again in another three to four days how it's going. So once we've done that, we might start finding that we are moving towards where we want to go. When we then get to two weeks later, so let's just say that's 14 days time. I've already been in contact with them twice at days four and days eight. We then have another session at day 14. I then say, okay, how is it going? Obviously we know how it's going to some degree up to the eight days, but then on 14, all right, where are we? And they might say that I have uh, reduced the pain from eight to six, or for the last three days, I haven't had pain or um, the pain isn't the same until one o'clock in the afternoon. Okay, great. So what we've then got is we've then got um, a sm that, that small success that I was talking about. So in the next session, what we need to then do is think about, okay, well, how are we going to do this? Are we going to try and push this back again? So it might just be, okay, well, the strategy that we've been using, let's just try and use it or continue using it and see if over over the next two weeks, we could push it back to two o'clock or three o'clock or even four o'clock in the next two weeks. And so we then go about that same process. Now, let's just say that we, so I contact them on day 18, so that's four days after the first, uh, the second session. So I then contact them and they say, this isn't working. It's staying at one o'clock, but it's not going any further. So what we then need to think about is, okay, so we've got that small success and we've pushed it to one o'clock. What is now the next strategy? So it might then be a case of a little bit more of a consultation. Okay, so what's working? How are you finding this? How are you finding that? And then it might be, well, okay, let's add in this onto the front of the strategy. So let's try this at the front. They then go away and do it. I contact them in four days and I say, right, how is it going? They might even be saying, oh, it's still not quite working. Okay, well, let's try putting what we said to do at the start of the strategy, let's put it to the end of the strategy. And then again, they go away, they do it for four days, and let's just say it's then day 28. So this is the day, uh, sorry, day 21. Uh, no, it won't, because it was 14, so it will be 28. So it's day 28, the date of the third session. So we then come back. Well, okay, how did you find it when we put it to the end? That seemed to work. Okay, great. So 
over that period of 28 days or what is three sessions, so we finish with the assessment, session one and then session two. So once we've gone through that, there are times where we're sort of veering towards success and then there are times where it's like, oh, this doesn't seem to be working. We're sort of veering in the other direction. This is a very normal part of overcoming lower back pain because what we are trying to do or what I am trying to do as a coach is understand your lower back pain, but trying to help you understand your lower back pain and trying to find the strategy that works for you. Now, again, as I've mentioned, this means that there are going to be some things that are working that we keep doing and there are going to be some things that don't work that we need to try and move away from. But we need to understand all that information because if we only try and focus on sort of what's working and what's not working, eventually we're going to choose something that's wrong and it's not going to go wrong. Oh, it's not going to go right, but possibly in a very bad way. So we have to go on that coaching process of learning about the lower back pain in what's working and what's not working. There is a degree of experimentation and what there is also with that experimentation, it is a calculated reasoning as to why we're experimenting in that way. So it's not just random stuff that we are gonna, I'm gonna throw at someone. It's based on what I've been told in the initial questionnaire, in the consultation, and in the assessment. It's also based on the feedback that I get. And how is that matching with what they have been told or what I've been told? Because if pain is getting worse throughout the day, it can mean that there is a um, like a, a fatigue problem. So the back is fatiguing. So what we have to think about is how can we offset that fatigue? So there are ways of doing that. So if we do that, but it might get to the point where it's just not getting any better. So what we need to think about is a different strategy is, okay, well, what is causing the pain? So we have to address what is another cause of the pain because if the fatigue isn't the problem or if we've worked on the fatigue and it's now not that anymore but it's something else we need to address that what order that happens in again it's it comes out as the process goes on so i mean this conversation about the variables and how lower back pain can be affected could go on forever i could be going you know round in not in circles but around in different variables and the, the order of the different variables I could be doing that for the next three hours so I'm not going to do that but what I hopefully have highlighted is the the mindset change of how we need to think about overcoming lower back pain some of the goals that we set to overcome lower back pain and some of the expectations that we need to start getting our mindset built into to be able to be successful with lower back pain or overcoming lower back pain because it's not as simple as or it's not always as simple because in, for some people it can be that simple here's a couple of exercises here's a couple of stretches go and do it bang back pain's done and it's gone for other people it can be very different it can take time and it can take a lot of sort of mental brain power to to get used to it and that's how we need to think about it so Hopefully, this has given you a better idea of the mindset, it's given you a better idea of the goals, and it's given you a better idea of the uh, expectations as to what you need to be um, thinking about when it comes to overcoming your lower back pain. So many thanks for watching, many thanks for listening. Hopefully it's been helpful. My name is Chris from Christopher Hole Training. I will speak to you in the next tutorial.